Good day. Good day, everyone.
Good afternoon. Good morning. Wherever you have, wherever you may be. So I'm just going to put the link to the uh, meeting minutes slash today's section. Just put that in the chat there. So everyone has a direct link. I just created that right now. There we go. And we'll give another minute or two to hit critical mass, wait for everyone to hop on board. Okay, I believe we'll get started. Uh, I'm going to remember it to do this first this time. Uh, is, is there anyone that's able to fulfill the role of a scribe slash minute taker for today's meeting? All right, uh, if anyone wants to, the role is open. I'll try and take notes along if there's no official scribes for today's meeting. Uh, with that said, are there any individuals from any special groups or working groups that would like to check you have anything to present before we get started? I can say we, we just a number of us um, went through the white the plans for the white paper just an hour ago and had a great discussion that included Benet and Dan and and others uh it was led by um emily I'm getting all my names right so that, it went well would you agree dan and vinay and others who were on any anything to add to that absolutely i, I was actually just uh uh writing in chat that uh um you know, since uh you know i'm neither emily or jj is able to sort of uh um, soldier forward into this uh, session. Um, if uh, uh, you or Vene could uh, give us a, a brief uh, high level of uh, what the plan is. Yeah, sure. So um, Emily and others laid out a plan for what the white paper, kind of the topics and outline for the white paper, and took a lot of feedback over the last two weeks or so uh, in writing. Then we just had a synchronous, you know, Zoom discussion about them an hour ago, uh, clarified a couple of things, and at the end decided that people who are interested will uh, put their names on various topics on writing the initial content for uh, based on the outline. And I think we said we'd all do that in the next two weeks and decide who, who's going to sign up for which. Mm -hmm. And then get going on the white paper. Great. So, you know, call to action there. Um, you know, if you have cycles and if you're interested in uh, contributing your subject matter expertise, um, you know, now's the time. Um, I will work to corral uh, someone to, to sort of do more of a readout um, in the coming week. Uh, you know, so everyone can uh, you know see where they can uh, you know sign up. Uh, there's a Slack channel. Um, it's uh, Six Security uh, Dash White Paper. And I put the um, issue. Uh, that is tracking this, and if, if you're not included, yeah, that's in, the head point. Right, yeah, yeah, and it, if it's a, uh, it should get to the document. If that's not, uh, if if you don't have access to it or you don't know what we're talking about and want to get up to speed on it, it's a good issue to read and comment on if you want to get involved. 
Did we record Doom, by the way? Like, will we be able to do it uh, on YouTube well, or something? Well, now there's going to be Post editing and, um, you know, some sort of late stage contribution that you'll be able to, to participate in, too. Thank you. Pardon, this was my fighting button. All right. With that said, I don't see any updates from individuals in the attendance so far. Are any specific PRs or anything that anyone would like to bring up? Uh, Matthew, I just had a quick update. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we mentioned that OPA is going to be applying for uh, graduation and we created a due diligence document. So it would be great if uh, Six Security could take a look at that document uh, and provide some feedback. Uh, so if I need to create an issue around that uh, or whatever steps we need to do for that, uh, yeah, please do let me know. Thank you. What, um, are, what are, uh, are you looking for with respect to this? Because from sort of my standpoint, uh -huh. um, you've already gone through the, the process, like the difficult process of the actual security assessment. Mm -hmm. And in my view, um, unless major things have changed with OPA or, you know, if you want to give us just an update, this is what's happened, then we s basically, the people who did the assessment are likely to look at it and say, yep, um, we still, you know, we still have basically most of the same feedback we had about OPA at the time when we did the assessment. Right. Um, is, is that basically what you've put together for us or are you looking for something else out of us? It's, it's I think primarily the same thing, uh, but I think the TOC requires a small feedback from six security since it's a security project. And we've kind of highlighted the stuff we've done since the last assessment in a way, uh, like kind of the improvements that we've done, uh, taking the last feedback into consideration. So I believe we put that as well in the due diligence talk. So um, it's nothing like major or like affecting OPA completely from last time, uh, but we've just added some new documentation and some, uh, some, you know, some new things to cover what was brought up last time. So, um, okay. and so we just need like a, like, you know, a small feedback around that document. So if, if you could yeah, have somebody we would be them. happy I think, to provide that. And in general, I like this process to be very low friction for the projects. Mm -hmm. So what, what you've done sounds great. I'm happy to look at it. I think the rest of the original reviewers, we can take a quick look at it. And likely, you know, we can produce something that uh, very quickly that just says, you know, yeah, OPA's, you know, like, our, as I said before, our feedback on OPA hasn't substantially changed. It's sure. So yeah, do I agree. Do this is Robert. I, I, I agree. We should review that. And uh, now, Justin, at some point we had talked about doing some sort of m more, I hate to use the word formal, but more concrete, you know, review of the assessments. So I, I don't know if that falls into scope here, but I think a, a, at least a quick review of what Ash provided is, is reasonable. Yeah, I, I think the thinking was we were going to be doing annual mm -hmm. reviews of projects although at the rate we're doing things and stuff we want to be careful that that doesn't like overwhelm the rest of our work um i think doing you know I, this is something that has to be discussed as a group but in general my my view is is that the most valuable assessment we're going to do for any project is probably the first one um agree yep uh i think that that like you know, if we got stuck in a position where we just didn't have the bandwidth to like look at new projects because we were spending all of our time doing kind of like lengthy reassessments for projects going up for the next level or lengthy annual re-reviews, that I think would be, you know, just my personal opinion, but I think that would be a shame. And so as a result, I'm, I'd like to make, my, my rough proposal is, is that you know, a project nudging us in the right direction and then us going and making a quick determination is probably the right path to go on for um, for project re-review so that you don't feel like, um, you know, you're, you're kind of having to redo the whole mess um, unless you go through something like 
like for instance, uh, Notary V2, um, some of the things that are being proposed there are basically, it's, it's almost, at least, you know, some of the draft stuff that's being proposed now is basically a complete rewrite of the system. And at that point, I think, um, you know, it is, Def, it would definitely be worth having a complete reassessment uh, because the security properties and risks and things like that, at least for some some of the proposed things, are completely um, different. Well, I, I think that's the opportunity here. Of course, you know, OPA was very helpful in, in the formative stages of what the security assessment would look like in the beginning. Here's a great opportunity to to kind of define the guardrails on what the refresh looks like. And maybe I mean, I'm happy to, to kind of put together, like here's a 10 point quick yes, no question. You know, have you undergone a major rewrite? Yes, no, right. And then, you know, spin off from there based on those answers. Um, so, so keep it simple. Yeah, that, that sounds great. So what I can do is I'll share the document in the uh, OPA security channel we created last time. And then uh, y'all can take a look at that. And if you have like those 10 point questions, Robert, or anything else that I can do to help this process as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, let, let's we, we just, can do that. Just a quick follow up, and I don't want to get in the weeds uh, on, on this call, but it, it is somewhat germane to CNCF projects that kind of fork off into other CNCF fish projects. So I know like OPA and Gatekeeper are, are now, I guess, somewhat two separate projects or, or would that be considered the same scope? And and how would we kind of handle that at the CNCF level? Do do you mean do we treat our assessment as though it's for both projects or right? Uh, I would think um, you know this is this is like I think we'd have to talk about that a little on a case by case basis, but I think in general you'd want to do some kind of reassessment that would be nowhere near as painful because when you add new kind of trust boundaries and things, which is a usual reason, you know, like a usual thing that happens then when you're looking at things, it does often change the security properties and also may change the way people use it and so on. So I feel that's, um, that's more like a rewrite of the code, even, even, uh, but you of course retain most of the work that was in the document. I can be wrong on this and I'm happy to hear uh, other opinions. Just a quick question I see from the chat here uh, from Dan uh, directed at uh, Kapil. Uh, Dan, has that been addressed or no? Uh, multi-party um, due diligence doc. Or is that still Sorry, you might have to reiterate that. Sorry, I don't know if the audio came through for everyone. I only heard the last couple seconds of that from you, Dan. Oh, dear. Um, so once again, uh, I was wondering if a, a due diligence doc has been created by the CNCF yet, um, where multiple SIGs are, are sort of piling on with their recommendations. So uh, we've created a due diligence doc so far, and right. I believe it's only six security who's gonna provide feedback for OPA at least. Uh, that, that's my understanding. So if I can share the doc with you all, and then um, you know, you all can add your feedback to that document. Okay, that's great. You're gonna post that in the, the issue? Uh, sh yeah, should I create an issue with it issue. or? Or link to it in the issue. Like you know, I don't know that we need to create. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. Um, and, and the follow on was that, uh, is there a, a date you're shooting for? Yet? Um, I don't think it's a date we're shooting for, but if we can get this process, you know, completed as fast as possible, that would be really um, great. Okay. Appreciate it. 
I, I largely think what you should do is um, is to post um, the new document uh, on and mention on both Six Security and the old channel, mm -hmm. and uh, like ping. You know, you can also ping us individually, but somehow bring it to everyone's attention who participated in the original review. If you have feedback within a week based on this, uh, please please give it. Um, otherwise, you know, we just need a, a nod. And then that that will have someone like me or um, who, I think I led the OPA effort, um, but whoever led the OPA effort or um, the security coordinator or even the TOC chairs, if the other people are not available to then say, well, this period's passed. Mm -hmm. There weren't any major things raised. Um, because like, I don't want you to get in a situation where you need a strong affirmative action by a large group of people in order to move along. It instead should be something where you put make the information available, give people the opportunity to to go and take a look and raise new issues or ask for more time about things, mm -hmm. but um, not a you know not not something where you're blocking on the fact that uh, somebody took a vacation right now or got busy with other things. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Uh, I'll post it in both channels and then, uh, yeah, we can go from there. Okay. With that said, are there any other comments or anything else to bring up on this topic? Okay, then. Going through the agenda, I don't see any other updates or PRs that have been scheduled to be brought up. No presentations either. So at this point, we'll open the floor. I do have a question about the, uh, thank you. I do have a question about presentations. So I see in the meeting notes, um, which page it is, but uh, proposed future meetings. Yeah, actually on the first page. So, um, like key line for CNCF inclusion, discuss issues, suggestions, et cetera. Um, how do those make the agenda? So those are proposed things for the future meetings. When do those actually happen? Or is that is that just kind of a placeholder for we might want to do these things? Uh, in general, anyone's welcome to essentially go through the backlog, like go through the, um, through the GitHub, um, GitHub uh, ticket system there and either add something that they would like to see there or people may just go through there and see if there's something that someone else has posted that looks interesting and then just copy paste it and say, hey, we should get around to doing this. So it's, um, I guess, a touch ad hoc in terms of taking it from the backlog and putting it into the meeting. And then as for creating the content to begin with, whoever wants to propose something can just go create the ticket, whether it's a member of uh, SIG Security or just an external third party that wants to reach out to and engage with SIG Security, they just create a GitHub account, they'll paste the ticket plus their contact info. That's the gist of it. Sometimes I'll go through it and pull ones that I see maybe need a little attention and throw it into there if I get a chance. So if um, someone who proposed one of these, oh, I'm sorry, if someone, if someone who proposed, whoever proposed these were here today and wanted to present it, they would. Is that accurate? Um, they could do it on the, on the fly or on the spot if they wanted to and we had time. Uh, I guess the preferred way is that someone chooses a specific date during which they would present those. I think we probably need to purge those ones that are in the, um, the meeting notes document you're referring to there. Uh, I leave them there, or at least we tend to leave them there for a couple weeks in case maybe we didn't get around to it and uh, we didn't want to delete someone else's work. <laughs> But, okay. Uh, I'll probably purge all the old stuff there if uh, no one has any objections. So the canonical source are GitHub issues, not not the document. Correct. For that's okay. And another that's another quick question. Correct. That's where we're finding. Uh, sorry. Um, so another so um, it looks like the things that are generally proposed are uh, you know um, things around um, assessing various things to be, um, you know, included and, you know, and endorsed in various ways by CNCF um, and other things. We're just the group, uh, somebody wants to get the impression of this group. Is that accurate? That, you know, basically it, it can be anything that may be of interest to this group, whether it's, we're asked, whether, whether action may be taken by CNCF about it in the future, it might just be an FYI. Is that, am I interpreting it correctly? I'd say 
least personally, that's a fair appraisal. There's also like some, I guess you could say housekeeping topics that come up, like we need to update some documentation or add some rules or uh, add some maybe build bots or something to some of our build jobs or linting the documentation, stuff like that. Okay. Great. I've got a proposed idea for the future, but I'll, I'll file an issue for it. We can discuss. I'm definitely not ready for it today, and I'll, I'll file something to be considered in the future. Thanks, Matthew, and everybody. No problem. Please feel free to put the issue in the tracker there, and if uh, you feel that it's uh, caught the necessary attention and hasn't ended up on a schedule, uh, by all means, please feel free to go ahead and put it as a proposed thing right there in the meeting notes, and it'll definitely, even if it hasn't been noticed in the tickets. Although the Members of the team are quite diligent, so it's not often something slips through the cracks. When just a, a you know just some framing there, um, you know, worth considering that we're uh, you know about to kick off this three month process, and uh, you know therefore uh, you know it'll suck a lot of uh, folks' time. Uh, so if the thing that needs to be done involves a lot of contribution uh, from a lot of folks, um, you know, you're going to get pushback from folks like me, uh, you know, on, on timing, uh, you know, as we try to keep, uh, complete that workflow. Makes sense. Thanks for the context. You bet. Okay, with that, are there any additional topics or anything anyone would like to see covered uh, in next week's meeting? Hey, so this is Underwood here. So kind of a related to this topic, I think, but uh, not a suggestion for a change in practice right now, but uh, we do assessments. This is part of my day job duties. And the question of deciding when an application that's already been screened needs to get rescreened is not necessarily based on the amount of code that's changed. Um, I don't think there is a simple rule of thumb for that. And in fact, part of what we try to do in the engagement with the projects that come through for assessments in our enterprise, not in CNCF, is to try to educate them about what those things might be that need to have them come back for a visit, uh, either in person or in some kind of um, uh, written update to the previous um, plan. So I think it's a worthwhile thing to think about um, trying to identify what those things are. So when the teams come through for the initial big reviews of the sort that Justin outlined, um, that they have a sense for what things would merit uh, you know, either personal visit or at least a, uh, a sort of debrief back to the security team that did the review. I mean, I'll just throw out a couple things like we see changes to encryption or decision to use tokenization or adding PII to an application that didn't have PII before, or we change uh, uh, partners for who's doing our API security. Um, we're doing uh, some uh, some major changes with the security tooling partners. And so the, um, uh, the vendor APIs are having to be revisited for some security issues, which at the time these folks came through for initial review uh, wasn't really of much concern to us. We were happy to see it, but we didn't really look at it in detail. So that's not an exhaustive list. That's just, you know, sort of the typical stuff that comes up. Um, but there's also other dependencies with other cloud projects, um, the one that comes to mind for me would be Prometheus or uh, the authentication tools. But uh, again, I think if you could, we could offer guidance and uh, for the teams to come through that that would be a value add. Because uh, I think just saying come back when it's been changed is not going to help them. Justin, what do you think? Um, I think that's sensible. There's a couple of things. Um, I think we have to be a little, um, like we'll have to kind of customize to this environment because in general, if something like the encryption changes, but it's just an algorithm swap out, then most of the time from our standpoint, it just won't matter. 
I mean, unless someone is swapping out, you know, something for MD5 or something like that or whatever, which you wouldn't expect to have happened. Um, I think a lot of the points you make are really good ones. And I think um, if you can share, like, you know, basically what you just said along with any other points that you commonly have that you give as guidance, um, that might be a good um, draft, um, uh, like sort of thing for us to look at. I think the other decision we'd have to make based on that is, is that something that we look, we want to look at for a project immediately when that changes? Um, or do we want to, in the annual review, go through all of the items like that that have changed for a project? Um, and I don't know the answer to that, but um, anyway, yeah, so I, I think that's that's all i very am very encouraging of your suggestion mark and would love to have you maybe write up a list of those things that we could we could iterate on uh, i think you're muted i am indeed thank you uh my my boss said what's the most commonly thing said on zoom it's you're muted uh I was gonna say, I'm, I'm mindful of your suggestion that we keep a light touch and that the folks who went through extensive reviews uh, should be you know, apprised that that's, it's not gonna be an extensive review. And also I think you know, the use cases I'm able to think up ad hoc here, are maybe not the best one. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to write up a few things and post them for consideration. Hey, one uh, maybe unrelated question. Uh, there have been a couple of presentations on CI/CD pipelines, both on the DoD SecOps group and others. I was just curious: uh, is there a, a unified working group? That's and what's the intended artifact for that? Is that like a subgroup of the SIG, or uh, I'm just trying to understand what the outcomes are and how to participate? So this is uh, Vinay, and maybe I can talk about it. Um, I gave the last presentation on the CI/CD security. Uh, so what came out of that is that there's some artifacts that we could potentially use that can be contributed into the the, C, the SIG security, cloud native security landscape, or I'm sorry, I forget the exact name. Give me one second. Uh, it's called the cloud native security white paper. So, so a lot of the, the information there would be fed into that. Potentially we can leverage some of the visuals and illustrations. And then there would be the idea there is to actually highlight a lot of these topics as well as uh, then uh, as necessary have a deeper dive uh, concepts that are uh, distilled in separate white papers. So that's one. And then uh, uh, Brandon and Justin have already had uh, a landscape uh, effort uh, underway for quite a while, and then potentially we'll see how we can uh, contribute and leverage uh, to that effort as well. Cool. And are there regular meetings on that? Is that just informal? So, uh, from the cloud native security white paper perspective, we just had one meeting this uh, morning. There is a there is a Slack channel that has been established for it. Uh, Emily or Dan and somebody, maybe someone can invite you to it if you could just uh, ping them. And uh, so I think it's just been ad hoc for now, uh, but there is a Slack channel which I would imagine is the authoritative way to communicate across the stakeholders. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Any remaining topics, anyone? Okay, I saved this uh, moment for the end here. If there's any new people, if this is your first time uh, visiting uh, SIG Security, if you'd like to grab the mic and introduce yourself, uh, please feel free. Otherwise, we'll conclude in another minute. Hi guys, Matt here. I work at Synopsys and I'm trying to get up to speed on cloud native security. So yeah, like if anybody has things it would be good for somebody pretty new to this space to work on, I'd, you know, like in an open source way, I'd definitely be happy to, to, you know, look at some of those things and, you know, kind of ramp up and hopefully help you out too. 
Sure thing. One of the recurring themes, and I myself asked that question uh, joining the group. Uh, there's the backlog on GitHub. There's just joining the meetings a few times to sort of get a feel for what's uh, the current topic, like if there's a new security review that pops up and people are welcome to join in on it, take part in it, um, that sort of thing. The, the recurring theme I often hear being uttered is uh, we've uh, chop wood, carry water. <laughs> so you'll see that in Slack a few times. It's uh, good to have on board. Awesome, yeah. What, what, what's your, uh, you know, what's your security background and uh, what, what uh, sort of ways do you like to, to contribute? I don't really, I don't really know much about security. I'm more, you know, I like, I've done a lot of application development and stuff like that, but not really any security. So for me, like getting a good handle on security that's happening in the Kubernetes space, you know, like keeping clusters secure, images and that kind of stuff is super useful for, for what we're doing. So yeah, I mean, I'd love to, you know, contribute in any way that's helpful if that's like writing code or triaging issues or reproducing bugs or whatever, you know, like, yeah, anything really. Got it. Um, so in this forum, you're not going to find, uh, you know, any opportunities to uh, code directly. You're going to have to go from, you know, kind of this uh, higher order level here in the SIG uh, down into uh, individual projects. Uh, you have, you know, a number of the, the members of OPA uh, present today. Uh, it's a great, you know, sort of uh, place to start getting oriented. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, path contribution, um, you know, this is going to be, you know, kind of an abstraction above that. Um, you, uh, you know, you, you aren't going to uh, find a lot of opportunities there. Um, the workflow that we're just, uh, you know, sort of discussing and kicking off uh, with the white paper um, will be uh, extraordinarily useful, uh, you know, where a lot of the, the, um, substance of the white paper is, uh, you know, capturing the understanding of um, how security is fundamentally changed in uh, a cloud environment and some of the assumptions that we've had, um, you know, uh, regarding, uh, you know, access to systems and, and um, the, the quote unquote physicality uh, of, of system as opposed to like, the, you know, how we virtualize things. Um, yeah, and and that's uh, you know something that we're uh, diving deep in, uh, and uh, you know you'll you'll have the opportunity to be a part of that, um, you know, over the next three, three months, and then you know in terms of uh, you know sort of deeper dives into a project, um, you know participating in, in a security assessment would um, you know really uh, give you the perspective of. Uh, you know, what seasoned professionals uh, that work in this space uh, are looking for and, you know, the types of concerns uh, that uh, uh, arise as we're uh, assessing the uh, components that make up a cloud native system. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I appreciate it, you guys. And yeah, looking forward to learning more about this. Right uh, as a book, I'll add a link here. This is just my tooth. This isn't officially endorsed by CF or anything like that, but uh, it's an interesting document by Nick Anshley on your security. And interesting reading that you mentioned you're interested in um, container security. I found what was interesting was after reading this, finding guidance that cited and referenced it and found essentially just a boatload of user information that I've been using to write my own security policies within my own company. So it's a, it's a good starting point, sort of square one and find your feet, so to say. So uh, you can see that in the chat window if you look at it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, with that, are there any other new members on the call today that would like to do a up? Okay, with that, looks that's a wrap. Have a great day, everyone, and stay healthy. Thanks, you too. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for hosting. Thanks, Matt.